Hello and welcome back to another episode of AB Chinese and part two of my da grammar videos. In today's video, we are going to learn how to use da with adjectives. If you're here from last week, good job on your consistency. And if you're new here, be sure to check out part one where I discuss the most basic function of da, which is possessions. So with that out of the way, let's get started on this week's video. So to describe any noun in Chinese with an adjective, all you have to do is remember this structure. Adjective, da, noun. Hey, that looks really familiar, like what we learned last week. So this should be easy, right? Piaoliang, beautiful, da, well, go, dog, the beautiful dog. You could also change it out for, you know, anything. Piaoliang de mao, the beautiful cat. Or you could say, heisa de mao, heisa de go the black dog or the black cat. Now, if you really think about this, and I don't know if this will help you remember or not, but this is the exact same function as what we learned last week. The dog belongs to beautiful. So I have this really weird thought where like, there's like this castle under a spell, and if the dog goes into the castle, it gets the beautiful spell because it belongs to beautiful. So now the dog is beautiful. Get it? No? Okay. <laughs> I, don't, it, I don't know. If, if that helps you remember, let me know. So now let's look at a full sentence example. This beautiful dog is mine. 这 is this. 这 is a classifier for dogs. 漂亮, beautiful. 的, go is dogs. 是 is. And 我的, we learned last week. Uh, 我 is I, and 我的 means mine. So we covered both weeks in one sentence. Uh, there's two ways for using 的. This beautiful dog is mine. 这只漂亮的狗是我的. I also want to cover dropping the noun, because you can also do that with adjectives, to discuss an, an ambiguous number of things that have a certain trait or quality. So going along with our example, 漂亮的 by itself just means beautiful ones. The ones which are beautiful. And uh, another great example I thought of, it's related to food because I seem to like talking about food a lot on this channel. Tianda, sweet, and xianda, salty. So when I was younger, my parents used to really love eating doujiang, which is like this soup made with uh, soy milk. And you had two options. You got the sweet one and you had the salty one. So if you went to the restaurant and you're like, well, you want doujiang, and you didn't specify which one you wanted, then they might say, do you want the salty one or do you want the sweet one? So like that's like an example of where you would see this being used. Oh, and going along with that then, you would also hear la de, uh, the spicy ones, a lot in restaurants. If you're ordering food, they might say, de, like this is spicy. Are you, do you want that? Are you okay with that? You know? All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is that once again, there are some instances where you can have an adjective right in front of a noun and not have de. And I will reiterate what I said in the last video, there are really no hard set rules for this. So the best way to learn it is to just know a lot of vocab and listen to a lot of native speakers talk. And if you're going to err on one side, err on the side of including the de. So with that out of the way, here are two situations where the de might be dropped. The first one is when it's part of an object's name. So, for example, earlier when we were talking about the doujiang, tian doujiang is an accepted name for a certain dish. It's the sweet soy milk dish. I still don't know how to say it in English. But tian doujiang, you wouldn't say tian de doujiang. If you were asking about the doujiang and you were describing it, you can say, 这个豆浆, this, uh, this soup, 是甜的, it's sweet. But when you're talking about it as an object, as a dish, that is widely accepted, then you say tian doujiang. And same thing with the second example. Gong gong qichu is a widely accepted term for a public bus. Even though public is an adjective, in this instance, it's included as a part of the name. And when you say gong gong qichu, it's more of a term than it is describing a qichu, which wouldn't make sense either way, because qichu by itself is car, and it's not even a bus. Gong gong qichu is a bus. The second instance you would drop the de is when you're talking about classifications. And once again, this is not for every single classification. These are just some patterns that I've noticed. Uh, for example, when you're talking about cold air, 冷气, 
You don't say 冷的气 or you don't say 热的气 to say hot air. You just directly say 冷气 cold air. This is cold air as opposed to hot, which would be 热气 No 的 at all in there. Ah,、uh, 穷人 poor people, or you could say 富人 to say to talk about rich people. No 的 in there either, or a、uh, bad habit. 坏习惯 as opposed to 好习惯 which is a good habit. So notice that all of these are like classifications of like a type of a thing.、Uh, you're like kind of on a spectrum. You're either poor or you're middle class or you're rich. Like in English, you would have terms for these things, like the th- terms I just said, like middle class or poor, or cold air, hot air, lukewarm air, things like that. Bad habits. I don't know. There's there's not really one another one for that, I guess. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this topic. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. And I also encourage you to not just on this video, but on every video, to try to make sentences with the things that we just learned in that video. And I'd be happy to check those over for you too, as long as you just mention that in your comments. All right, see you guys next time. 下次再见了，拜拜。